G'day. A few clips ago I made these up, which were a, a, a tool holder for basically holding quarter inch, three sixteenth, whatever, tool steel uh, in, a, in a lathe tool post. And that started me thinking about making something for uh, a boring bar, or more particularly in my case, a, a threading tool. And so I came up with this. So today I'm going to run through uh, how I made that. Uh, probably the trickiest part of that was broaching the hole through this on an angle. And so to start with, I had to make one of these things. A uh, bit of a misshape and angle block, but as you can see, that sits on there and uh, enables me to broach a square hole straight through that at, at an angle. And the angle is actually critical to the, uh, the ease of use for this. So why is this, um, should we say, better than this? Well, a couple of, couple of things here. Um, first of all, the, the square shaft on there means that I don't have to worry about a clamping block. And if I have a holder with a, with a V in the bottom, I don't have to worry about it moving around the place. Um, that's, that's just solid. Okay. Um, the majority of my threads I cut are less than this into a part and so I can make that a fixed length. I don't have to worry about moving that back. I could, I guess. Um, the other option is too that if you like this style of, of holder and boring bar, there's nothing stopping you from making that round and uh, you know using it that way. But I, I just thought that this was good and that certainly gives me rigidity that way, resistance to, to twist. The skewed bar as well as making the tool uh, easier to sharpen is it's probably say say about five millimeters from the end there now if I contrast that with so this one it's more like 10 so I can get a lot closer to the the end of a bore or something like that without uh, without any dramas um, now if you didn't want to use something like this for threading, you wanted to use it for boring, there's nothing stopping you. You could just ground a, a slightly rounder tip on the, on the end there or, or a different shape and, and you'll be right. Um, so, you know, all in all, um, not, a, not a terribly difficult thing to make. Uh, I did it the hard way by, by broaching those uh, square holes in there, but um, if you don't have broaches or you, you uh, feel that that's a, making things a bit too hard, there's nothing stopping you from once again drilling a hole and, and filing that out. Um, the key thing there is that hole needs to be, you know, 30 degrees-ish, just so that, uh, um, you know, you, you don't have to do terribly much work on the, on the tip here. I've finished my support block and uh, I won't to bore you with a video of, of making it because it took a took a while but basically uh, I held the block like that in the vise to clear out this with a, a milling cutter held it like that to put a run a slitting saw through to, to uh, uh, clearance the radius in the back bottom of the, the uh, cutter and then spot face and drill a hole through for the um, the brooch to go through so that, that's a 3 8 hole uh, and that'll give clearance to a quarter inch brooch uh, and that's as large as I'll be running through here anyway so uh, I'm all ready to um, uh, brooch except that I need some blanks. I set it back a little bit because I figured well I can always trim a bit off the end if I wanted to when I'm turning my uh, stock up but uh, that at least gives me a little bit of uh, an option there. I'm making my boring bars up with some black bar um, People say, oh no, it has to be special stuff for tooling. Well, the Young's modulus for black bar, or for, for steel, full stop, is the same regardless of what steel you use. Um, where special grades of steel come in handy is the strength. Now, I'm more concerned as this is a boring bar with deflection, which is a matter of, of spring. So, you know, um, I'm not too concerned. And this is, this is an experiment anyway, so, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't get too worried about it now. This is 20 square bar. Uh, that's nice because it gives me some stability on my, my V-block. But this one's going to be caught and this is going to be 3 16th. And I've drilled the pilot holes to suit. Now, according to the manufacturer's literature, um, my quarter inch brooch can only go through uh, 3 quarters of an inch. And this one can only go through 5 eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters. So I'm going to have to now uh, take some material off the uh, 
mainly the back face. Uh, probably have a bit of a skim on here. What I don't want to do is disturb the the hole because what happen is, is going to happen is that the brooch will go in there. Now, if I've if I've got a flat surface here, there's going to be equal pressure on the brooch all round. So that's that's quite good. However, if I've got part of this missing, I'm going to get a slightly, well, I'm not going to have the cutting forces on this side, so the, the, the brooch is going to be slightly unbalanced. So I'm trying to avoid that by putting these flats on here. Uh, I've got two types of flat. I've got just a straight cut across, and I've also got a, a little, um, well, I just fed it with, a, with a, an end mill, so uh, just to see how those work. So I'll take a little bit off the, the, the top and the bottom here, uh, much more off this one, and then um, broach the holes and, and square everything else up. I'm about to start broaching, so I've got my uh, holding block prepared. Uh, I've got my blanks with holes in the right spot, and uh, I don't know whether you can see that down there, but that all that all lines up nicely. The uh, the brooch is going to go in like so. Uh, I'll make sure that that's square with the side of the the holder. Um, pop it in the in the press. In the press, I've got a block there to, and and uh, to stop the sliding and clamp everything down. I don't know whether I'm going to get any side forces. I hope not, but uh, just in case, I don't want the uh, the, the brooch snapping on me. So uh, we'll see how all that works. Work has progressed on the blank, so I've given the uh, the brooches a, a little bit of a tickle with a file. Uh, that one's quite nice, this one's a little bit looser. But that's okay because there's a grub screw that, that goes in here and will clamp that down. I've put the flat on for the grub screw. I uh, haven't put the, the hole and tapped it yet. Um, that's now down to 16, so um, it's starting to take shape. And as you can see, I've already got 30 degrees on there. So if I come along here and put a, um, a 60 degree angle on there, all I have to do is grind from one side. Uh, I've got a, I've got a, a um, threading tool which can not only get into some tight places, and I may trim that back a bit more too, um, but is extremely easy to sharpen. So uh, we'll see how this works. This is the finished article. Um, so I've turned down that uh, shank, and this one's half inch, this one's um, five eighths of an inch, uh, and put a, a grub screw in here to secure the, the tool still. Um, grinding these things is actually surprisingly easy, because if you look at the, the tip there where I've marked with blue, to get a 60 degree angle, all I've got to do is take off that little bit of material. That's not quite square anyway, but that doesn't take very long at all. Uh, as you can see with this one, um, I've done that. I've ground that down, put a little bit of relief on it. Uh, similarly, on this side, I've just put a little bit of relief, but nothing too extraordinary. And then on the tip, I've put some relief as well. Now, I do that when I'm doing internal threads because uh, if you're turning on the outside of something like that, it doesn't really matter if that comes straight down because there's going to be clearance if that's on center height. As soon as you start turning on the inside of a diameter, you run the risk of that fouling the, the hole. And uh, the smaller the hole, the, the more relief you, you have to think about. It's, it's similar to helix angle when grinding uh, thread cutting tools in that if, you, if your helix angle is greater than the relief you've got on there, it's going to, it's going to rub. So um, yeah, but that was, um, 
This was ground just using the fishtail gauge, so put a little bit of relief there and then came along with the, the gauge and uh, uh, put that on and that I found that quite easy to do. How well does it work? Well this is an internal thread I cut with the, uh, the tool, uh, as you can see, fits in there quite nicely. Uh, I've got quite a, a decent thread. Um, the reason I cut this in half was that I just didn't have any uh, 1 and 13 30 second uh, bolts that I could use this on so uh, it was it was pretty useless to me unfortunately. So that's how it was done. Hopefully that's of interest to people. Um, please uh, share and uh, um, invite others to, uh, to watch along and we'll see you the next time.